Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. Today's video is another in the series we've been publishing on the brand new Xeno Mini Pro. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to properly calibrate your compass. Now, I know a lot of you are already thinking, Rick, that is such a super simple procedure. Why are you wasting time putting a clip together to show us how to calibrate the compass? We've been doing that forever in all the drones we fly. I know it's a simple procedure, but I'll make you a bet that some of you out there are doing it wrong. So I'll show you the right way to do it. And the interesting thing is if you do it wrong, you'll still pass the compass calibration test inside the drone, but your readings are gonna be off. So I'll explain in a minute what I'm talking about, but let's talk about the compass first off. So the Xeno Mini Pro of all the drones I fly tends to be very sensitive to any kind of outside interference. So I found that if you put this down near any metal, or if you've got a big watch on, or maybe your phone case has got a lot of metal on it, it can interfere with the compass. And when the drone first boots up, it looks at that compass setting, and if it finds any kind of disturbance, it's gonna to say to you, hey, you better calibrate the compass because I can't trust it. And that compass calibration is incredibly important because it tells the drone where north is. And a lot of other calculations the drone does is based on that north setting. So it's really important that if you get that message, you take 30 seconds and calibrate the compass. Now, I think the reason it's so sensitive is the compass itself can be done in a couple of different ways. Pretty much every electronic piece of equipment you're using, your phone, your drone, other things, have an internal compass on it. And, and there's a couple of different grades of those types of compass. So you've got, in your iPhone, for example, you've got a magneto sensor, which is a pretty good version of it. You could have a magnometer like this one has. And the quality of the magnometer really can determine how well it can reject outside metal and still hang on to that compass calibration. Some of the most impressive ones are magneto inductive compasses that'll actually look at what's going on with the compass. It'll, it'll resonate or it'll detect resonance outside that unit from metal and other electrical signals. And it'll compare that to the original compass and it'll discard those signals. This doesn't have that level of sophistication. So if you put this thing down near metal, I guarantee it's gonna scream for a compass calibration. And I did a little testing because it was driving me a little nuts when I first started flying it. I have a nice deck off the back of my house and it's a great place for me to fly. I've got a nice big backyard. So I'll put the drone down, I'll spin it up and I'll put it up and just fly around the yard. It's a lot of fun. But I found that every now and then I'd put the drone down and it would ask me for a compass calibration. And I thought, let me do a little experimenting because that's bothering me a little bit. So the deck is made out of Trex, which is like a composite material. And it's got a foundation underneath it made out of plywood, or I should say two by sixes. So I thought, it's all wood, what is, what's going on here? So I started moving the drone around the deck a little bit. And I found that this one particular spot, it seemed to trigger a compass calibration every time. And lo and behold, those Trex boards are, are, are attached actually to the two by sixes by little clips underneath and those little clips have screws in them. So if I put the drone over top of that screw, it was enough to actually throw off the compass calibration. But I think that's a good thing because I want to make sure the compass is properly calibrated because I don't want the drone doing wacky things up in the air. So if you're getting that, that message, make sure you calibrate the compass. All right, so what a compass is doing during calibration is it's trying to find true north through three of its two of its axes of rotation. So essentially, you're going to hold it like this and you're going to spin it. And it's going to find north, and it's going to spin again to find it a second time. It's going to compare those two readings and lock in a north. Then you're going to do it horizontally, and you're going to spin it twice this way. So it's got two axes of rotation, this way and this way, horizontally and vertically. And once you spin it through those axes of rotations twice, the compass is all set and ready to go, unless you get near metal again. Now, what's interesting, too, is I noticed that the only time it'll scream is during boot up because it's reading that compass calibration and if it sees interference it's saying eh, i don't quite trust it once you've done the compass calibration you can get near it with a watch and everything else and it seems to work just fine anyway let me show you to do the compass calibration and, and let me give you a little hint too <laughs> when you're rotating it through its axes a lot of people will hold it at arm's length and spin their body like this and they'll hold it at arm's length and spin their body the problem is when you're ca calibrating a compass it's looking for the center point to rotate around that axis, not three feet away from the center point. So if you hold it out at arm's length like this and spin around, your center point is here, it's not there. So your compass is gonna be off by that, uh, that amount and that, that level of degree difference can be pretty large when you're spinning around, especially if you're a big guy with long arms, you might be out three and a half feet and your compass calibration is gonna be off. Now what's interesting is it doesn't know that. So it'll come back and say, yep, calibration complete, go fly. But every calculation the drone's doing is this far minimum, this far away from its center point. So when you're doing the compass calibration, you wanna hold it as straight as possible in a vertical position and spin it on its axes. Try not to move it around when you're doing it. Try to keep it exactly where it is and spin it around this way and then 
put it down horizontally and spin it around this way. Now I may have those backwards. It may be horizontal first. Actually, they get us horizontal first and then vertical, but I'll take you outside and show you to do it. I'll show you the screens you have to go through. But my recommendation with compass calibration is number one, if you ever get the message saying, Hey, calibrate the compass, don't ignore that message. I know you're anxious to get up in the air, but do the compass calibration. Cause the last thing you want is the drone to get a little confused when it's up in the air and fly off in a different direction than you're intending. And the second thing is if you're traveling with the drone. So if you calibrate a compass at home, and you're traveling, my rule of thumb is if I'm traveling more than 50 miles away, I'll calibrate the compass again, because even though you're you're not that far away, 50 miles is quite a distance, but you, you have different earth magnetic fields at that location than you do here, based on the composition of the soil and a bunch of other things that are going, the water content of the trees around you, everything can affect your compass. So if you're traveling more than 50 miles, calibrate the compass. If you get the warning, absolutely take a breath, calibrate the compass and you'll be good to go. Now stay tuned, I'll take you outside, I'll show you how I calibrate the compass, then I'll come back with a couple of final thoughts, because I'm having a lot of fun with this drone, and I know a lot of people out there were asking a lot of questions about it, and we're trying to work through all of the questions we got and put clips together, but this compass calibration is one that we've gotten a ton of questions on over the last couple of weeks because I guess it pops up a lot for people and I'm trying to help them through the, uh, the stress, if you will, of calibrating the compass. So stay tuned, we'll head outside. Okay, here's the calibration procedure for the compass. I've got the drone powered up, I've got the controller connected to the drone, the application's open, and to start the procedure manually, if you haven't gotten a warning, is in the upper right hand corner, you'll see a little icon, tap that, that'll bring up the main menu. Then the second option down is the compass, and it's telling you to stay away from metal and electrical devices. Uh, the aircraft must be within 1.5 meters uh, of distance from you. Then you hit the start calibration, and it'll come up with a diagram. Set the controller down, you'll pick up your drone, and I was wrong, it is horizontal first, and you'll spin it twice through a horizontal plane. And again, try not to move it too much in this direction. And once that's finished, you'll flip it up vertically, and you'll spin it counterclockwise at least twice sometimes three times, for it to find its position in north. And once it's done, it'll come back up to the main screen and you're ready to fly. It really is just that simple. But the thing you want to avoid, which I see a lot of people do, is they think when they're doing the calibration vertically, they're holding it like this, and they're spinning themselves. And again, the problem with that is the compass is now uh, maybe three feet away from the center point, which is going to really throw off its reading. So always keep it anywhere you want, but keep it centered like this, and spin it on that pivot point. Don't move it around when you're doing that compass calibration and it'll definitely uh, give you a very accurate reading. Okay, it really is that simple to calibrate the compass. Now, a couple of final thoughts, and I wanna re-emphasize this because if you fast forward it just to the section where I show you how to calibrate it, you might've missed these warnings up front. So for starters, when you put the drone down, before you power it up, make sure you don't have a big watch on, don't put it down on, on a metal picnic table or, or in concrete that may have rebar in it because all of that can interfere with the compass calibration. And if you find that it's yelling about a compass calibration, do the calibration, do not fly this with that warning coming up because again, it uses that compass north for a lot of calculations going on inside the drone. And again, compared to other internal magnometers, this one may not be as sophisticated, so you may get that warning more than you will on other drones. But again, it's a 30 second procedure. I think it took me less than that to actually do it. Never fool around with that. And then the other rule of thumb, like I mentioned earlier, is if you travel with this, so for example, if you go more than 50 miles, just manually start that compass calibration and you'll know that the drone's gonna fly straight, it's gonna fly right, and it's always gonna come back home when it's done and you're gonna have a happy day as opposed to wondering why your drone disappeared over the horizon because your compass was way out of calibration. Anyway, that's pretty much it for today. So if you have any questions about what I've covered today, drop those in the comments below. And let's be honest with each other. If you've done a compass calibration where you've made the mistake of holding it at arm's length and spinning around, pirouetting on the center, that's the wrong way to do it. Let me know that. Be brave and tell me that you've done that. Hopefully this procedure helps you. I know I've done it myself a few times when I first started flying, and it really does have a big impact on how well the drone flies. And that's pretty much it for today. So thanks again for watching. I've got a lot more clips coming on the Xeno Mini Pro and a bunch of other technology that's coming up over the next couple of weeks. So you definitely want to stay tuned to the channel to catch all those clips. And if you haven't subscribed, we love all the people that are watching the channel and subscribe, but hit that subscribe button down there and join the Drone Valley family. We're going to have the 12 days of Drone Valley Christmas coming up and a bunch of giveaways that people are going to get excited about. You definitely want to get in on that. So thanks again for watching. And until next time, <laughs> happy flying. Thank you.